fouling. He's the guy that you want to put on the line. You're not fouling Stockton. Right. You're not putting him on the line. You're not letting him take the shot. Hey, guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kepp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Hello and good day everyone, welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. My name is Sean David, thanks for tuning in, let's talk some old school NBA basketball. Now Karl Malone is one of those NBA figures where you have two different camps. You have the one camp saying that Karl Malone is one of the greatest players of all time, which obviously he was. And then on the other hand you have all the other personal stuff, which I want to exclude in this video. So in today's episode I want to take a look at NBA Legends talking about Karl Malone the player. And you would be surprised there is one comment by Kenny Martin, which we're going to take a look at later, which is pretty harsh. But let's take a look first at some other clips. Let's get it started. Now the first player's opinion that I want to take a look at is from Gary Payton, aka The Glove, who played alongside Karl Malone in 2004, I think it was, with the Lakers, and as we all know, that season didn't turn out the way that they were hoping for, but anyway, let's take a look what The Glove has to say. The mailman, I call him Gators and Gators and Jeans, he know what I'm talking about, Gators and Jeans, he wear Gator boots and tight jeans, that's him, but to me, I think that was the greatest power forward ever. I just I just have to say that because the, what he did on the block with him and John Stockton on the pick and roll and he can get to where he wanted to do and put that foot, that knee in your chest as you go up and score the basketball the way he did. I don't care what nobody say, you could never handle Carl Malone on the block by yourself one-on-one. -on -one. The mailman, Carl Malone! You see the little move where he put his hand behind his head. You're watching one of the all-time greats at any position in any era. Man, that, that guy physically was the most, one of the most imposing players to go against. And, and I think that hindered you oftentimes on how you wanted to approach it because I'd never seen a guy that big could run like that. I mean, he was incredible on the wing at running the floor. And even in our era, which is probably the most physical era we had, when you talk about basketball, nobody was getting in front of him. When you saw that train coming downhill, you were just a little shy about wanting to sacrifice your, your body. And, and, and you hear the line today about it being a business decision. That, that's what it was with Carl. You couldn't stop him with a Mack truck. And the next clip that I want to take a look at is the one that are announced at the beginning of the video. Kenny and Martin talking about Carl Malone with a little story and it's pretty interesting. Let's take a look. Y'all remember Carl Malone elbowed Isaiah Thompson, split him mm -hmm. open? Yeah. Remember that? Zeke yeah. was leaking. Right? Way before you was even in the league. Way before yeah. I was ever in the league. I just want to set, I just want to set this and up. And never thought I was going to be in the NBA to begin with. Mm -hmm. But I remember you had him leaking, right? We playing Utah. We in Jersey. And on the break, John Stockton dropped that thing off to him. I go right upside Carl Malone fucking head. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Lay him out. And he didn't get up and do nothing. I was like, oh, these motherfuckers so oh, far here. <laughs> like, and Jerry Sloan, God rest that man's soul, he, oh, you motherfucking, I kick you. And I was like, he tried to take up for him, like, and Carl didn't do nothing. I was like, but that was for Zeke. Mm, you know what I'm saying? However many years I, later. Way later, Yeah, that's crazy as a motherfucker. Why? Listen. Holding inside Carmelo, great pass, hammer dunk. Over to Carl, angle left, jump shoot from 18, got it, the mailman! Uh, so you and mailman were roommates once? Me and mailman were roommates in 1982 at the World University Games. And we've been friends ever since then. And him and Tim Duncan to me are the best big man runners ever. As far as finishing fast breaks. 
uh, call I thought was the best I'd ever seen about getting up and down the floor. And Tim Duncan took it to another level. Well, did you and Carl know each other at all before that? No, 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 no. So what did you learn about him from being a roommate of his? He snores. <laughs> <laughs> he snores. <laughs> country. <laughs> uh, 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 like, yeah. I had the same overall. We were both in college. And I don't think either one of us. <laughs> really? No, we, we were both in college. And I'm not like, I didn't know he was going to turn into the mailman. I don't think he'd think I was going to turn into Sir Charles. Out of Rodman and the mailman. I, I think you guys would agree. Both of them were ahead of the curve when it comes to their w time in the weight room. Yeah, conditioning. I mean, both of these sure. guys lived in the weight room. And if you look at uh, Carl, his rookie year, toward when he, you know, you see how big and, and how muscular, and still to be able to be that flexible and run the floor, to me, and I'm not trying to stroke you at all, but look, you and Carl, to me, are the, the greatest power forwards of all time. And you talk about guys being able to go coast to coast with the basketball. Now, how can you have a Carl Malone episode without John Stockton? I mean, Stockton, Malone? Stockton to Malone. Anyway, let's hear what John Stockton has to say about his former teammate. And then when we got on the court there, I, I felt there was something magical. The guy read my mind. Um, he caught everything. He finished everything. He had... A, all my work ethic and then some. Um, he, he loved the game and just one thing after another, just kind of bond, 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 bond. Um, to where now he's he's literally inseparable for me as a brother. I mean, we don't see each other every day. We talk occasionally on the phone, but uh, you know that, that term's probably overused. But there's nothing I wouldn't do for Carl Malone, and I think there's I think he feels the same way. I used to watch him punish all my guys, all of them, every power forward I ever played with we'd have to double, and he, he know we have to double, and he always wanted me to come down and double so he could drop it off to my guy. So every time he got the ball, he wasn't worried about the guy. He'd be looking at me to see what I was going to do. And if I didn't come, he'd just dribble, 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 and shoot the jump, and he'd be like, you better come, Shaq. You better come help him, Shaq. You better tell him who I am, Shaq. His uniqueness came from his ability to be, would you think he would be a gross motor skill guy? When I say gross, I mean, Big steps, everything's big, boom, because of his size and strength. When you think of a fine motor skill, you think of Steph Curry, a guy who's kind of, who moves in like this. He was a guy who had both at his size. He could shoot the basketball, he could handle it, he ran the lane. He wasn't just a big, gross motor skill, skill guy. He was a guy who could do fine motor skills at such a big size. That was his uniqueness. And Man, I don't know if you know if there's another guy like that. Uh, center is. Okay. Right. No brainer. Just checking. Uh, power forward. Put these hands on you. <laughs> Carl Malone. What? No. I knew it was coming. 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 He intentionally. If I can say this, Isaiah, he intentionally opened up an old wound. You sound like little John over there. What? What? My good, hey, you've got him in stitches with that comment. Watch this. Wound and stitches, they go together. And not only were you going to take some punishment, but you had to suck it up and give some because you just couldn't be on the receiving end of those beatings for 48 minutes. Carl Malone taught me it was okay to be an outdoorsman. Carl told me one time in the Olympics, I fish, I hunt, I do logs, you guys like rap music, whatever, this is what I do. And after hanging out with him, I was like, you know what? I like to fish, I like to hunt, I like to ride horses. So me and Carl, we have a special relationship, but as a player, it's a reason why he's the number one two scorer in the league. He's one of the greatest players to ever play the game. One of the greatest power forwards ever play the game. Stockton, right side of the road. Hands up. You got another baby, the mailman. You know what, Carl Malone, I have a kind of interesting history in terms of when I was a small child, I never liked him because to me, I always thought he was boring. Always just pick and roll, pick and roll, pick and roll, pick and roll. Then once I got older, I think in my late teens, I started to really appreciate it because that's when you pay more attention to fundamentals and so on. And I was thinking like, okay, if you are able to score 
score more than 30,000 points on a single move, I mean, that is efficiency. And I started to really like Carmelo. Then I got to hear about all this personal stuff, and now I'm like, eh. Anyway. I would like to hear from you guys. What do you think about Carmelo, the basketball player? Post it underneath the comments. I'm pretty interested to read what you guys have to say. And I would say that was enough for today's episode. I hope I see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine. See you then, guys.